What's up guys, it's Chris, welcome to VHP Engines, and apparently I have neglected to cover this topic, and uh, every once in a while that happens. <laughs> My bad, I guess. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, today's discussion is identifying and classifying high compression engines, right? Because um, mainly, the main reason for this, uh, this topic is because we're covering fuel, right? Um, because everybody knows that if you run high compression, you got to run race fuel, right? That's not the case. And, and everybody knows that when you, when you're saying an engine is high compression, it's like 12 plus. That's also not the case. See, especially in the Honda world, when there are such a wide range of compressions to use because of all the different OEM combinations you can use, plus aftermarket, plus the different designations or plus the different compression ratings that Honda itself gives to similar engines or to the same engine in some cases, uh, that, you know, the high compression, low compression is a, is just a very generic go-to identifier of a particular engine. So just like everybody likes to use eBay as a version or eBay or China as an overall term to classify cheap parts when, you know, uh, eBay itself is just a marketplace and not a brand. And China actually not only produces cheap parts, but they also produce high quality parts. Like, um, you know, and some people may argue this, but Skunk 2, for example, also comes out of China from what I remember. Uh, so when we use blanket terms, it's to help people understand and identify what exactly you're talking about and what you mean. Like, um, so again, to cover that, uh, even if something isn't specifically that, when you use that term, you understand what you mean. That's why I always complain like about like, oh, that's not the right way to call that or whatever. Yeah, but when I say that, you understand what I mean. And at the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter. As long as you get what I'm trying to communicate, then it's a, it's a successful term, right? So um, <clears throat> when I tell you that's eBay part, and then you, you can automatically go to the assumption that it's cheap and it's a piece of shit. <laughs> so uh, when we talk about high compression, and low compression, the easiest example to show you or would to use obviously is the B20. The B20 is very is one we always very quickly identify as high compression, low compression. Everybody wants the high compression B20 because it makes more power, but it doesn't necessarily make more power 100% off the compression bump. There's also things that um, that factor in other other things that factor into that engine overall, which contributes to the uh, the horsepower gains, which overall isn't even very high. Now. Uh, to, as an example to show you that saying calling an engine high compression doesn't necessarily make it high compression is because um, there's three compression ranges for the B20. Uh, the low compression is 9.2 to 1. The high compression is 9.6 to 1. Not a very big high, uh, hike in compression. But yet people will go crazy for the high compression B20 and people will pay more money for the high compression B20 because of the hype around it. So that's why it's it's kind of, you know, and that's why like I've talked about in, in earlier, earlier videos or whatnot, I get aggravated when people overhype certain things. And it's mainly because of what they've heard from other people say, instead of actually having any understanding and knowledge of the, um, of, of what the thing is that they're trying to hype up. Case in point being the Z6 crankshaft, because it has extra oiling hole, you know, it makes it the better, it makes it a better crankshaft to use. But you know, again, it's, uh, I've, I guess I'll maybe, I haven't linked any videos in a while. Maybe I'll link to that one. And it'll be in one of the fucking corners over here about, uh, about the details there. But I've gone over that several times on this channel. And it's one of my, one of my pet peeves. I fucking, I, I hate, it's frustrating. So, um, <clears throat> So the, I guess when you go when you come to classifying a, a high compression engine, technically speaking, anything over the high, the stock compression rating is high, because it's higher than what it comes with from the factory. So therefore, it is a high compression engine. It's a high compression version of that engine. Um, another case in point being the K20. The K20 comes in multiple uh, uh, compression ranges, right? It depends on what you have. Whether you have a base model, whether you have a Type S model, whether you have a the Type R model. Um, <clears throat> Off the top of my head, uh, I think it's it's eleven to one compression for for a type as a nine something compression for the uh, the K twenty eight three. It's eleven something eleven to one compression for the K twenty eight two, and and like it's K twenty Z, and then it is uh, eleven five for the ITR, and it's eleven eight for the CTR. Now, um, I've used the the CTR pistons a couple times for the K twenty, and I do classify that block built with those pistons as a high compression k20 
And that still works and still fits into that category because the block is generally an A3 or an A2. Now, those two blocks both came with a lower compression than 11.8. So 11.8 is the compression for the, uh, for the, uh, for that block. For, so high compression is a proper, you know, way to classify the engine. <clears throat> also, when you use Type S pistons in a K20 A3 block, it's 11, uh, depending on what head you're using, it's 11, 11 1 compression. So, Again, classifying that K2083 as a high compression block, even though it's standard to the A2, is still legit because the A3 naturally comes in nine and change. So there's that. Now, when we come to, to fuel, like, uh, like, do you have to, as soon as you bump compression, do you have to run E5 or race fuel? No. Now, I'm not a tuner, so I can't tell you 100%. You know, this is fact, but based off of plenty of circumstances that I've seen, uh, twelve five and one compression seems to be the place where you stop running pump, you know. And premium, of course. Anytime I talk about uh, running pump fuel, I am talking about ninety three. Talk about premium fuel. Anything less than that is not as a no go. Now, can you two with something less than that? I'm sure you could, but when you're talking about like maybe the twenty five to fifty cents difference in gap in fuel, guys, Jesus Christ, get over yourself, pay the money. I have put premium fuel in my cars. For the longest time. And, you know, so it's whatever. Don't even think about it anymore. So anyway, uh, when you're talking about pump gas, it's 93. Uh, I classify E85 as a race fuel uh, as also as well because of the fact that you can't get it at every pump. When it when E85 becomes universally accessible at every single gas station without question, you know, then then E85 is pump gas. And until that day comes, E85 will, I will still put in the category of race fuel. Um, with that being said, uh, ED5 being the easiest nominal go-to race fuel because it's 110 octane. When I, a lot of times if I'm talking about you need to tune on, you know, it, you can't tune on pump, ED5 is my next one go-to. As far as I'm concerned, I wouldn't use M1 or above unless it's a dedicated race car, which I think for obvious fucking reasons. Um, so... If you come to Chris and you're asking what compression rating at what point in time should you um, run E85 and above, it's uh, once you hit that 12 right at 125 range. Anything above 125 to one compression, I don't think I would feel comfortable trying to tune on pump. I would tune at E85 and higher. So it's 125. Uh, so technically, like 126 and above, because at 125, I'm still I'm still willing to run that uh, on pump gas. Um, I guess that there's one exception I may attempt later on down the line to, to make to this. If if I uh, run a straight K24 with the RRC pistons, are they supposed to be 13 5 to 1? I may tempt, attempt to run uh, pump gas on that just to see what happens. <laughs> but I'm a long ways off from running an NA setup right now, so it's not going to be a thing. And then even then, I might not do that because I think that by the time I build my NA car, it's going to be a race car. It's not going to be something I daily. So, uh, because when I, I, I'm, I'm probably going to track my turbo cars or whatever, just to, you know, just to do it. But, uh, I think when it comes down to it, when I'm really ready to compete in a is the way I want to go. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, if you're, if you're looking, uh, if you're looking for like, so for those guys that are talking about a high compression B20, high compression B20s are almost never really high compression. Um, the go-to piston for the high compression B20s are the, uh, uh, the, the ITRs, the V-Series ITR, and it's not really high compression. Depending on what head, uh, combination you go with, usually it's like in the 11 range. <clears throat> so, uh, unless you, so again, to reiterate, unless you're going to cross that, uh, unless you're passing 12.5, you're, you're good to run on pump. So hopefully that covers, uh, all that high compression and fuel talk, both of those things in one video. Um... Uh, social media links are in the description down below, guys. Uh, the website's there if you guys want to shop and browse tools. Uh, not tools, Jesus Christ, parts. If you are if you want to get an idea on how much uh, uh, heads, blocks, bear blocks, CSS blocks, pistons, rods, and whatnot cost, that's all there. No, I haven't added the new D-Series uh, Vitara pistons on there, but that's just because I, I haven't had time yet. Uh, I will soon. Uh, again, for those people that are curious, they're $180. And the uh, shipping for all parts is worldwide. Uh, pistons are $60 shipping uh, internationally. And uh, also short blocks and blocks are, uh, short blocks and heads are also available for overseas shipping that I have to give you individual quote on based on where you're at. Um, yeah, that's it. So thanks for watching, guys. Happy Thanksgiving and...
Peace.